Hey folks, take a look at this beauty here, this little sleeper PC. Just take a good look at it. Would you suspect this was any newer than 1997 or 1998 by looking at it? Maybe if you recognize DVD drives. Here's the side of it. Here's the back of it. Now, at first glance, glance, would you expect a thing by looking at it? I don't think a normal person would. I know a lot of you would because you're as technically minded as I am, but you take a look at this DVD drive and you realize everything is too round for it to be part of the era that the case is supposed to be from. It looks like it lo this looks exactly like a Pentium 2 white box PC from the from the mid, from the mid to late 90s. At least to me it does. Uh this is an Inwin case. The box is over there. Uh, it's an Inwin, I think, V-series case. It's an old case, and uh, but not as old as you think it would be. Uh, what I wanted to do here was build a sleeper PC as sort of my secondary rig next to my main one. I thought it would be fun to do that. I needed to buy a case for that anyway, so I thought buying a sleeper would be a lot of fun. Here's the side panel with that little vent there. This This looks like an old exhaust fan grill to me. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else gets that impression, but I certainly do. It looks like a, an exhaust fan from like a bathroom from the, I don't know, the 50s, 60s, 70s. Probably the 50s or the 60s. Something like that. You know, old style. And of course, here's the back of it. Got a power supply in there. Got a motherboard in there. I think the only thing that really gives it away big time is the DVI port. And the other DV and the other HDMI port down there. This is definitely not a Pentium 2. So what is it? Let's find out. Why, there you go. You may find this board familiar if you've seen my videos. This is the Gigabyte H61 motherboard that I like so much. This has a Core i5 2500K in it. Uh and 16 gigabytes of RAM that I uh, stole out of the gaming rig, which now has 8 gigs of RAM in it uh, after doing this build. Eventually, probably towards Black Friday, I'll put 16 gigs back in the gaming rig, uh, so it'll be back where it was, but I wanted this RAM in here right now. Uh, the gaming rig can survive on 8 for a while until I can buy 16 for it, and I'll bring that back to 16. Whew. Now that we've got that out of the way, what else we got in here? We got a one terabyte SATA hard drive. And believe it or not, that beige DVD burner is a SATA one. I managed to find a SATA DVD burner that fits this case. And it was made by TIAC, of all people. TIAC made this drive. And I know TIAC from Real to Real Decks, and you may you may uh, know them from that too. So that's kind of cool to see them making uh, optical drives. On top of that Core i5-2500 2500K, I have this Dynatron uh, K985 cooler. I think it's the K985. Uh, it might be the 987. It's one of those two. They're both almost the same, so, you know. Below that, we have a graphics card. This is a GT730. It's a rather crippled version of it that only has 96 CUDA cores. Um, but it does have 2 gigs of RAM, and it is 128-bit, so it's not entirely terrible. Uh, and it, it'll handle what I want it to handle just fine. And uh, there's your 16 gigs of Corsair low-profile RAM. And this thing also has a hard drive cage in it, which I think is pretty nice. Look at that. Nice and old school. Very, very old school. I like that a lot. Although sometimes the cables get in the way, but I can, I can maneuver all this stuff one-handed and it's fine. So there you go. It's a very old school design case. Really nice thick metal. Very sturdy, so I'm pretty happy with it. Although it didn't come with a power supply or a rear fan, you do not want a case to come with a power supply ever because it will be crap if it if you if it does come with one. Rear fan that kind of annoyed me. It didn't come with screws either, which kind of sucks. So I'd use my own. But so I stuck a random Sunon fan I pulled out of an old HP yellow label there in this computer, and I plan to buy a better fan for it later, probably whenever this fan dies. But for now, this fan does just fine. There's really not... It, this computer's not going to get too, too hot anyway. So, that's fine. 
Uh, oh yeah. And since since you guys love to harp on my cable management, I'm gonna, you know, zoom in on that mess. <laughs> Let me address that for a moment. I could care. Le I could not care less about cable management, guys. I really don't care unless it's causing a thermal issue, which it really rarely ever does in my machines. So settle down about that, okay? Anyhow, uh, there you go. That is the white box PC build. I oh yeah, I didn't explain what the power supply was. This is a 350 watt Antec Basic Power power supply. I had this thing lying around, and I figured it'd be perfect for this system because it only uses a 54 watt. No, it doesn't use a 54 watt. I think this might actually use a full 90, 95 watt CPU. Now that it's using the Core i5, I'm thinking of the uh, I'm thinking of the main computer. Yeah, this uses uh, it only uses a processor and a low power GPU. So 350 watts is plenty to get this system running. Uh, no problem at all, especially from Antec, who typically puts good circuitry in their uh, power supplies. Although I've seen I've seen these go bad before in one of Cube Computer Channel's videos. So you know. Keep an eye on it, but it should be fine because I'm not pushing it that hard. So, there you have it. That is the sleeper case, the sleeper computer. I'm gonna this this thing's being named the sleeper. So, what I'm doing with this machine is much the same I'm doing with my main computer, which is to put Debian Linux on it with the Mate desktop, and just use it that way as a secondary computer. Um, I'd have TeamSpeak running on it a lot, uh, so I could use a headset and all that kind of stuff. Um, what else would I be doing with it? Uh, basically, so I could have two separate tasks going at the same time. Let's say I, say I needed to render more than one video at a time. I could use the secondary machine to do that. And with the Core i5 in it, it's definitely up to the job. So, you know, there you have it. Uh... I always thought it would be fun to make a sleeper build like this. Uh, I did that pimp my Pentium 3 video once just for fun. And I know some people were like, but, but you're ruining the genuine, like, you're ruining the genuine old experience. Well, I was just doing that for fun anyway, just like I'm doing this for fun. Uh, putting a new build, putting a new board in an old looking case. I just think that's amusing because you can stick this in a room and nobody would know any of the wiser, you know? I mean, obviously, I mean, and what I mean by that is the average person. I don't mean someone who's who notices things and works on this stuff all the time, who would definitely notice a thing or two. But you know, your average person wouldn't be able to tell the difference, and I just find that amusing. You could you could bring somebody in, turn that computer on, and then it would load up like Windows 10 or something, and they'd be like, "What?" <laughs> I just find that amusing. So that was the whole principle behind this machine. So, except mine's gonna be running Linux instead. So. There you have it, folks. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to go put this up on the desk, boot it up, and show you guys the basic installation it has. There's not much to show, but I'll show it anyway. And the sleeper is set up and put into its location right next to my main computer here. Nobody would know any better, just with it hidden there. At least until you looked over at the setup and see the red keycaps on the keyboard and the big black Samsung monitor. <laughs> Anyhow, this is the machine. Uh, let me open up the uh, that thing, the system monitor. Just to show you, it's Debian 8, Jesse. Just like my main computer, it's literally the exact same stuff, exact same programs, everything on this computer, at least for now. Uh, Core i5 2500K, so that's probably as far as I'm ever going to upgrade this machine, which is why I made it the secondary machine. That way I don't have to touch it for a long time. Uh, so, you know, there you have it. You get your four thre four cores right there. Not four threads. Well, four threads and four cores. There you go. Um, so there you have it. There really isn't much to speak of for this machine other than that. Uh, it's running the same Linux installation I use pretty much everywhere. Uh, what is good to note is I'm using the Samsung 204B SyncMaster monitor, uh, 1600 by 1200 resolution. So it's a good one, good resolution for a secondary monitor. Uh, I'm using the Cooler Master uh, Nova Touch Topper Switch keyboard that uses the Cherry Mounts, which is this is a good keyboard to have here because it just fits in this tight space very nicely. Of course, I'm using this Microsoft uh, 
wheel mouse optical. I'm using a white version instead of the black version I have on my main computer here, but it's the same mouse, only in a different color. So I know that the black mouse goes with my main computer and the white mouse goes with the white box PC. I figured that would be a good way to color coordinate uh, when using both of these machines. Oh yeah, and I have this giant hyena agenda uh, mouse mat that I got at Anthrocon this year. They were selling some really cool stuff there this year, and this was one of them. Uh, I love mouse mats and things like that, so I'm glad I got. I'm glad I got. I fi now I finally have a giant mouse pad. I've always wanted one. This is the perfect one to have because look at that hyena's face. That's fucking cool, man. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, that is the white box PC. Uh, just to show you, the DVD drive does work. I'll do that. It's a real thing, and it does work, and it's SATA. So, you know, there you have it. Anyhow, not the most exciting video in the world, but the novelty of doing something like this I thought was just fun, man. Maybe you do too. I don't know. But either way, I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.